This morning, Texas turnout. Early voting setting new records in cities across the state. We'll talk about the campaigns that might benefit from it. A rare interview with the Texas Secretary of State, Jane Nelson. Why she wanted to sit in front of our cameras and what she wants Texas voters to know. Politics has consumed the Robert Robertson death row case. State leaders calling for justice to be carried out. State Rep Jeff Leach saying, wait a minute. We'll ask him what happens next. What the first poll says since the U.S. Senate debate about the Colin Allred and Ted Cruz race. And the campaign strategy behind Kamala Harris and Donald Trump making last minute stops in Texas rather than battleground states. Inside Texas Politics with Jason Whiteley starts now. Good Sunday morning. I'm Jason Whiteley. This is the final full week before the election, so we have a lot to get to here on the program. Lots of headlines you've seen out about Kamala Harris and Donald Trump stopping in Texas. But context is always important here. You're right. Texas is not a swing state, but both campaigns say Texas does have something to offer. Harris wants to call attention to the state's strict abortion law. Trump calling attention to the border, among other things. And as Bud Kennedy told me, Texas is really just a big show and tell right now for the rest of the country. One week remaining right now to vote early and voters are setting records in Austin, San Antonio and other places across the state. Turnout in Travis County during the first few days of early voting significantly higher than 2020. Same story in San Antonio and statewide. Dallas County, though, is the only one in North Texas seeing less turnout initially, perhaps because of some tech problems at some polling sites. And the first political poll since the U.S. Senate debate shows the race between Colin Allred and Ted Cruz. It's tightening even more. Emerson College did this one the weekend after that debate. Cruz is at 48 percent, Allred at 47 percent. But Cruz's support has decreased one point. Allred's is up two points since Emerson's last survey in September. Let's begin this morning with a state official who rarely gives an interview to anyone. Secretary of State Jane Nelson, she has never really been very public, even when she was a state senator for years. But Secretary Nelson returned our call the other day and said she would take our questions on voter misinformation, suing for citizenship records, and the state's new plan for keeping voter rolls clean. Nelson took our questions from my colleague, Cynthia Izaguirre. Thank you for making time for us, Secretary Nelson. And I know that you've got some numbers right now that you want to share as of today from the Secretary of State's office. Yes, we are really happy to report that early voting numbers are record breaking. We have now, uh, as of right now, 2.6 million Texans have early voted in this election. That's about 14% of all registered voters. And of course, our numbers for registered voters in Texas is up. So we're seeing a wonderful, very healthy turnout for early voting. I want to talk about what happened on Monday in Tarrant County. As early voting began, we now know a voter made a mistake on his ballot and it was rectified. But how it was portrayed on social media for millions of people to see was that the machine purposefully switched his vote. Can we talk about the damage misinformation like this creates? Yes, I'd like to talk about that. You know, rumors and misinformation has always been a part of elections. What has amplified that, though, is social media. Uh, and it's uh, rumors catch fire. That is a perfect example of what actually happened and what was rumored and then amplified as truth. And it's very difficult to counter that with the actual fact. We work so hard to maintain the integrity of the election process, to make sure that every vote counts, that we're counting every vote, that we, we go through a huge process to inspect every single machine, to train all the people who are working in our county election uh, administrators' offices and down to the precinct level. and. What is damaging is that sometimes when these rumors and misinformation get out there and get amplified, it, it could discourage somebody from voting and thinking their vote doesn't count. And I want to counter that. I want to assure Texans that 
Texas is known all over this country for having the example of what other states should do to provide secure elections to its voters. And in protecting that right, I know that this week you and Attorney General Ken Paxton sued the federal government for refusing to verify the citizenship status of potentially ineligible voters on Texas voter rolls. So you're talking about 450,000 voters whose citizen status has never been checked because they registered not using a Texas driver's license, but instead one of the other forms. So what is the concern specifically about these 450,000 registered voters? I don't want anyone who is qualified to vote to be denied that vote. That would be terrible. I also want to make sure that nobody who's not a citizen is trying to vote, which is against the law, by the way. And so we are trying to get from the federal government a way to submit those names that we haven't been able to narrow down to find out whether these people are citizens or not. And that, that takes us to the, the question that you asked about, we have asked the federal government formally to tell us how we can get that, those names to them and find out. And we're still, <laughs> at this point, trying to get to that. It's close to the election, though. Why wait uh, till this point where the federal government isn't going to be able to do anything before November 5th? And doesn't this lawsuit itself then have the potential to create misinformation? Right. Um, Why wait? We haven't waited. We've waited to sue because we thought that we would be able to get this information and or for them to tell us how to how to do this without, unfortunately, much cooperation. So in 2020, the Texas legislature passed a law saying that we have to have specialized software to keep the voter rolls clean, like preventing double votes and voter fraud. Texas and many other states were using a system called ERIC, Electronic Registration Information Center. But in 2023, Texas pulled out of that system and we have yet to replace it. Doesn't that put us in violation of our very own law? No. Um, ERIC was a system that was uh, participated in by quite a few states, Texas being one of them, that helped us exchange information, for example, if somebody moved from one state to the other or some other things that, that we could share. States were pulling out of ERIC, and so the information that we were, and Texas was paying a pretty hefty price to participate. The legislature decided they didn't want us to participate anymore. We will have a replacement developed before the deadline that the legislature gave us, and I think it'll be probably better. We were told um, that there was a replacement coming in the next couple of months. What's the update on that? Yep, there will be. the end of the year. Uh, If I can get through these these elections... um, Yes, we're very close to having a replacement. We are doing everything that Eric did. We're just doing it in many different ways, and we'd like to have it all put together in a you know, central and, and a formalized process that we go through. So for the people who are concerned that Eric went away and hasn't been replaced yet, does it make this upcoming election less secure? No. This upcoming election will be the most secure election Texas has ever had. And we are very, very focused on that. So I, I want Texans to be assured that this coming election, their vote will count. Their vote will count and will be secure. Thank you so much for your time, Secretary. Uh, we really you. appreciate it. Thank you. I appreciate your interest. All right, let's bring in the roundtable to talk about the politics of this, this rare interview we have with the Secretary of State, Jane Nelson. Bud Kennedy is here from the Fort Worth Star-Telegram, Abby Livingston, Senior Congressional Reporter for Puck News, and I am Mitra from the Texas Tribune in Austin. Bud, let's start with you. One of the first things we talked about there was, was the voting machines, especially in Tarrant County, where you are there. Let's start with, with the machines. Well, I, I think we need to talk, first of all, we need to say that both parties try to convince their voters that they're being cheated and they need to come out and vote. This is a motivational tool that both parties use. The Republicans say, you know, the machines are bad, the elections are bad, more of you need to come out and vote, not enough Christians are voting, you've seen those signs. And then the Democrats say there's voter suppression, they're trying to take away your vote, 
come out and vote. So this is a motivational tool in both parties. In this case, Jason, people's memories are short. In 2018, when we were using the old heart intercivic machines that had a, a lever, a button, and a wheel that you had to turn mm. and push it like a little kid's toy, uh, sometimes that wheel would slip. There were stories all over Texas in 2018 about uh, the candidates uh, slipping, that people who voted for you know, one candidate for governor, it would slip down to the other candidate. And so uh, NPR did stories, uh, you know, uh, Tegna stations did stories. That happened all over Texas with heart machines six years ago. People remembering that, they're afraid it'll happen again. We don't have those machines anymore. Yeah, that's a good point. And memories are short, as you said. Abby, let me ask you, uh, lots of people early voting. We discussed the records being set here. Which candidates, which campaigns are benefiting? Oh, that's a hard question, and it's a dangerous question. Uh, you know, it looks like Republicans are doing pretty well. The thing is, is all we can tell is who's turning out to vote, whether they're a Democrat, a Republican, or an Independent. And this year, we are going through a realignment. It's a crazy election year, and it's really dangerous to draw sweeping conclusions with the numbers we see now. Yeah, it's still too early, Ian. Yeah, I agree with Abby. You know, you know, it's normally you could say one way or the other, but there are. You know, there, there are issues here, too, where there could be some, you know, Democrats who are not who are not you know, voting the same way. People who are maybe motivated by certain issues, immigration, economy that may not necessarily make, you know, everything line up the way that you might think in, in previous elections. Yeah. Patience for us. It's tough because we, we obviously want to know as soon as possible. Guys, back to you in just a moment. A lot more ahead, including this. When we come back here, new developments in the Robert Robertson death row case. Will state lawmakers ever hear from the convict himself? State Rep Jeff Leach on what is likely to happen next. And the small Texas county shattering records for early voting turnout. Inside Texas politics back in a moment. Welcome back to Inside Texas Politics. You know, the political story consuming Austin right now isn't so much the election, but rather what will happen next with the case of a death row convict. State lawmakers successfully got his execution postponed, but they have not been able to have him testify like they had hoped. State Rep. Jeff Leach is closely involved in each new development of this evolving situation. He's a Republican who represents parts of Collin County. Representative, good to see you again here. Good to be with you. Do you think the committee is actually going to hear from this convict in person, face to face? Well, I'm hopeful that we uh, that we will. We're working actively on that, and uh, it keeps getting delayed, though. Well, there's a reason that we issued a subpoena, and what we did was unprecedented, uh, I believe, anywhere in, in American history, and uh, um, so we did so because uh, we, we have serious questions about this case, about the system. Um, about his guilt or innocence, about Jason, whether a crime even occurred. And so I believe it is important for the committee to, to meet with him. It didn't happen at the Capitol uh, this past week, but- um, Will it happen next week? We're think? still hopeful that, that, uh, that it will. If, if we have to go to him in Livingston there uh, at the Polunsky unit, then that's what we'll do. We're working um, around the clock on that. For a field hearing, I mean, would it actually, I mean, could, could that happen logistically inside death row there at the Polunsky unit in East Texas? Look, anything can happen logistically. Where there's a will, there's a way. Um, uh, we're working collaboratively and have been for many days now with, uh, with House Administration, with uh, the Texas Department of Criminal Justice, with DPS, uh, with local law enforcement there to make this safe for everybody involved, most importantly him. And, um, and, and so, yes, it can happen. I believe that it, it should happen. I, I'm hopeful that it will happen, but we'll see. Governor Abbott says this committee, the Criminal Jurisprudence Committee, overstepped its bounds. What do you think about that? I, I, uh, with all due respect to, to Governor Abbott, uh, I, I disagree with that. Actually, the, the, the gentleman who wrote that, that letter to the Supreme Court um, telling us to stay in our lane, yeah. his name's James Sullivan. He's a, he's a dear friend of mine. He's one of the best lawyers in America, one of the smartest men I've ever met. Um, which a Rice undergrad, Harvard Law. Um, he's, he serves the governor faithfully and well, and we work together on a lot of issues. I believe he's wrong on this. Uh, the legislature has a role here. Uh, when we're talking about the death penalty and just the heaviness of this decision, the executive has a very important role. The judicial certainly has a very important role. Well, so does the legislative branch. And we have, we have, we have seen a problem. Uh, we've seen a potentially innocent Texan uh, with, within, uh, Jason, 20 steps and 20 minutes of being put to death by the state receiving a lethal injection of pinto barbitrol, something all of us, every branch of government has to own when we do that. Um, to say to the legislature that you just have to stay in your lane and you have to sit down and you have to shut up, um, 
is, is not something I'm comfortable with, the committee wasn't comfortable with, and I believe um, the vast majority of state representatives are not comfortable with either. The Supreme Court only delayed this, um, but for how long? If you guys can't take testimony, this can't go on forever. So uh, the, the clock has certainly been, been reset. Now again, we're working actively to, to secure Mr. Robertson's testimony and uh, to figure out a way forward, but um, the, there's not an execution date set anymore. That, that resides in the Anderson County with the district attorney there. She can do that in 90 days. Um, I, my hope is that the Board of Pardons and Paroles, they can step up, the Court of Criminal Appeals can step up, the governor can issue a 30-day reprieve, and this is so important. I wanna, wanna, wanna reiterate this again and again and again. I, I do not want, nor have I heard anyone say that Mr. Robertson should be released today and be walking the streets of Texas tomorrow. Um, all we want is to push the pause button and to secure a new trial for him. We believe he's owed that, we believe justice demands that, and that's why the legislature has been so forceful to step up and, and push for that. If that happens, I'm confident that a just result will, will be arrived at. Representative, thank you for the time. Thanks, Jason. Early voting ends on Friday, and Texas has set records in its first week. Some rural counties saw 20% of the vote come in just in the first few days. But there have been some isolated glitches, as you've likely heard. Elections administrators wanted us to share this one tip with you if you haven't yet voted. Look at your screen, look at your electronic screen, make sure your selections are there when you print out that, that print vote record. Before you put it in the scanner to cast your ballot, double check it. If it is wrong or you have perhaps not selected who you wanted to on the screen, um, our system allows us to spoil that ballot and issue a new and so the voters need to be patient, just make sure they, that the vote is correct on the screen. And then when they review it prints out, review that so that we make, we make sure that they get to vote who they wanted to vote for. All right, just a few important election dates left on the calendar right now. Friday, the last day to vote early, the 1st of November. Then a week from Tuesday, November the 5th, that's election day. The roundtable is ready when we come back here on Inside Texas Politics. And Texas poll workers are doing something this election cycle they've never really done before, preparing for threats and intimidation and needing to call the police. A lot happening in the background at your local elections office right now. An insider pulls the curtains back on it in this week's episode of Yolitics. You can look for it wherever you get your podcasts. All right, time now for Reporters Roundtable to put the headlines in perspective. Bud, Abby, and I are all back with us. Abby, let's start with you and Kamala Harris in Texas and Donald Trump both in Texas. Harris is in Harris County in Houston. She has Beyonce. She had Willie Nelson. Quite a turnout there. What's the point of being here so close to the election since we're not a swing state? Well, it seems like they wanted to find a red state where they could juxtapose their uh, message on abortion. But from the Texas Democratic perspective, the agenda here is to narrow the margin even more than Joe Biden did in 2020 so that next cycle they can go to national party brokers and donors and say, look, this is worth the hundreds of millions of dollars of investment. So that's what's on the line for Texas Democrats. And they are trying to narrow that margin, I am, but polls aren't showing that the margin's really narrowing, at least right now. Yeah, it's tough for them to see that narrow, uh, but there also is an element here, for, too, which is that U.S. Senate race between Colin Allred challenging Ted Cruz. And, you know, with, with the Senate uh, uh, in the balance here, they, they, the Democrats have few opportunities for pickups, and they still see an opportunity here with that close race in, in Texas. And Bud, with Trump here as well and Harris in, in Houston, uh, you said this is all really just a big show and tell, kind of like what Abby said. Yeah, Jason, I, I go back to the beginning. I, I think they're both coming to Texas to hold Texas up as an embarrassing example for the rest of the country. I think that Kamala Harris is bringing out victims who have suffered because of Texas abortion laws. I think she's going to show the rest of the country. If you don't vote for me, the country might wind up like Texas. And then for Trump, too, he's talking about the border and what's happening here with Texas with, with uh, undocumented immigrants coming across. And in that case, he's uh, talking about the federal government and Joe Biden's administration, which he now refers to as, as the, the Biden-Harris administration all the time. I embarrassing examples. Uh, I don't know if, if, if uh, Texans might like that uh, to be made uh, fun of in that sense. Uh, Ian, let's, let's talk about the early voting in Texas and pick this back up. Uh, our, our podcast uh, this week, too, is, is about uh, election officials under pressure, having to face training that they really haven't faced before. That's something you guys have reported on in the Tribune. Yeah, and this is something, you know, obviously we're talking about a tight timeline. We're in the middle of, uh, with voting here too. And, 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 and this has really been a, a lot of questions being brought up, a lot of opportunities that to raise doubts. And so, 
you know, I think uh, election officials are having a tough time kind of, you know, to trying to express how you know, there are safety guards in place. You know, the law about paper ballots is, you know, most counties, I mean, most of the state is is following these things. The paper records are paper trails are there. And so, you know, trying to address all of this misinformation that's going so rapidly is a challenge. And, you know, it's it's also creating a lot of confusion for, for officials at a time where, you know, there's a lot going on. And we've all reported on this, Abby, but is some of this overblown? Do you think? I think to an extent, I think it is fascinating that Secretary Nelson came on your show because there is a nationwide effort among Trump supporters to bring into question the integrity of the voting system. And if that happens in Texas, it's her credibility and Greg Abbott's credibility. And so this is a fascinating point of tension. But what do you go ahead, bud. Jason? I think I think it is important that Secretary Nelson came on. I think election officials are trying hard to come from behind in their use of communication. You see them doing YouTube videos now. You see them doing explainers on X. You know, uh, they see how quickly that Trump camp the Trump campaigners promoted the video out of Tarrant County last week. It went worldwide viral within moments. The election officials are trying to get their message out just as well. Yeah, trying to hang on to the messaging part of this. Abby, let me have you pull your crystal ball out one more time here. Final week of early voting, putting you on the spot again. Final week of early voting, what should we be looking for here in Texas? I would be looking to see how many voters on election day are voting early and how many and vice versa. I think that that is the, the key question uh, of what's going on here. And, and I and one of the things that elections administrators are telling us is that you know, the, the turnout is going to be uh, just massive on, on uh, early voting. Look, we're out of time, I, and I'm going to save that question for you for next week. But thanks so much, guys. We appreciate it as always. And thank you for watching as well. We're back next Sunday to take you inside Texas politics. Just